know my name, if I see you in heaven, I believe we will. I certainly do believe that we will. We will see our loved ones again as we cross over the Rainbow Bridge. I don't understand it. I don't know how it works. But I believe it to be true because Jesus was the very one who proved to us that death is not the final act. That physical death is just a transition in our existence as eternal spiritual creations. I don't know about you, but I believe that. I believe that I am eternal. I believe that you are eternal. The Word says that we were with God before time. And that we were God with God before time. That means we will be with God through all time and after time. Whatever that means, that we are with God, that God is with us and always has been, is now, and always will be. And so it is with our loved ones. And so I look forward to seeing my first husband when I cross over. And I say, God, and how's that going to be? Because I got remarried. That means I have two husbands. I'm going to see them both in heaven when I cross over. How's that? And he said, don't worry about it. Jesus said in heaven, you don't marry, you don't eat, you don't drink. It's different. It's not like that. Amen? Amen. So I'm not worried about it. I'll be glad to see both of them when I cross over. Or maybe I'll go before the second one. I don't know. He'll see me. But I just know that Jesus said, you know, if you tear down this temple in three days, I'll raise it up again. And I, he came and he showed himself to his disciples so they would know that physical death is not the end. It's not the end. That's my message this morning for you and for me and for everyone that we love. Physical death is not the end. Amen? Amen. And so I'm glad to be here this morning. And um, like I said, this message is going to come to me while I preach it because I, I'll tell you why in just a minute. But I'm going to just go back to that one scripture. If you just please stand one second. Let me just read this one verse from Psalm 46 back into your hearing. Psalm 46 in verse 2 says this about not being afraid. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. You may be seated. And I'm thinking about Minister Matthew's daughter, Catherine, right now, that she shall not be afraid, even though there was an earthquake. And even though the buildings fell down and, you know, the streets are all torn up and can't get anywhere, you know, everyone is in chaos. But I'm praying that right now that God is with her in a very real way that she's not afraid. And I'd like to use for a topic this morning, God is always with you. God is always or with us. God is always with us. Can y'all say that with me? God is always with us. Amen. Amen. Eternal and most wise God, I thank you for another day because surely God, no day is promised to anyone. Ricky was here on Friday and on Saturday he was not. So many others were here on Friday and on Saturday they were not. Because for every one of us there is an appointed time when we make that great transition. But right now, God, we, we thank you that we're still here. Yes. And we appreciate our lives, God. We appreciate what you're doing with us and through us in our lives. We thank you for everything, God, the good and the bad, the up and the down, the trials and the tribulations, the joy and the victories. We thank you for it all, God. And I just ask you right now to be with me as I bring this message to your people who dare to come out early on a Sunday morning Help me now, God, to bring it to them in a way that will give us a revelation about who you are, oh God, and who we are in your sight. Help us to go deeper in the Spirit and be changed for having come out together this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And yesterday morning, I was, uh, you know, taking it easy on a Saturday morning, and all of a sudden my phone rings, and I know when my home phone rings, it can only be a few people because I don't give that number out just to a few people. It's because my cell phone doesn't work very well in my house. But in case of emergencies, some of the people can you really need to get me can get me on that house number. And so when it rang, I thought, well, I don't know what's going on. I answered it, you know, hello, good morning. And it was Rev. And he said, I've been trying to get you. 
And I said, well, you got me now. You know what? And he told me, he said, Brother Ricky passed away just now, just a little while ago this morning. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. And I jumped up. And you know what? we got to be ready, y'all. In life, you don't ever know what's going to happen. Amen. We really don't know. Nope. We think we might know. But Sister Anna always says, if you say, well, I'll see you Sunday, Sister Anna. She always says, if it be with God's will, I'll see you on Sunday. If it be God's will, I'll be back tomorrow. If it be God's will, you know, I'll see you again. But if it not be God's will, let's always remember that we don't know, really, when we're going to see somebody for the last time. And that's why it's so important that we guard the words of our mouth and our behaviors. Because I'm glad that, you know, Brother Ricky and I were good. I love him. And, you know, we had, the last time I saw him, I hugged him. And, you know, there was nothing there that I would regret. Like, oh, I wish I could talk to him again. I wish I, wish I could have said goodbye. But I'm clear, you know. And so, how, so it is with us. Let us try as much as we can with God's help to be clear with all of our brothers and sisters. To treat them like we would like to be treated. You know, the golden rule. Try to forgive Try to, you know, be compassionate and understanding of other people's shortcomings and character defects. Amen? I need some compassion and understanding about my character defects and shortcomings. And so let's try to be understanding towards other people too. And then that way we won't say harsh words that we might regret later. That way we might not send a text to somebody that we'd be sorry we sent it. You know, that way, you know, if we never see them again, we'll be clear. And our heart will, will be in peace. And so I went over to Exodus Homes, and, you know, Rev and I have been through a lot, and so we're talking about what to do. And, you know, of course, everyone is feeling really hurt because somebody just got snatched out, just snatched. And, and actually, it's a blessing for him because what a peaceful way to go. You go just, you're gone. I, I say, God, that's all right. You know, I wouldn't mind if you take me like that. That would be fine. And so I'm thanking God for the peaceful way that Brother Ricky left. But I'm also like, wow, he just got snatched out, not even knowing that he was really sick or anything like that. And so we got to be ready, y'all. That's one thing I want to say this morning. We need to be ready at all times to handle whatever life throws our way. Amen? Because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen on your job. You don't know what's going to happen in your family. You really don't know what's going to happen with your life. You know, if we if we live and if we're doing anything, there's always some risk out there. And so we really don't know. And so we live as if today is our last day. And we also live as if today is the first day of the rest of our life. you got to live both ways. It might be my last day. I might live a long time. And I'll be glad I did right today because I'm building towards a better future for myself. And um, one of the great things is that uh, Brother Ricky's uh, children, and his sister and all the people who loved him can say, you know what? He was clean when he went. He'd been clean three years. What better thing is that for a family to know that he was clean and in his right mind? He gave them a present by the way he lived. He was just a living amends. And so we thank God for that. And uh, But we're hurt and just trying to figure out what to do next. Because how many people have ever gotten a ride with Exodus Homes? Raise your hand. If anybody at Exodus Homes ever given you a ride, you drove... Brother Andre, I know you must have back in the day. If we added up all the people over the years who have been blessed by the transportation service at Exodus Homes, it'd be a whole lot of fun. Because we get people rise who live with us, and we get people rise who have lived with us and need, still need transportation. So it's big, and it's a thankless job. You know, it really is. It's a hard job. And so right now, I'm, I'm standing in gratitude for every person who has ever volunteered to drive at Exodus Homes. And I want to ask the drivers, would you please stand right now? I know we've got at least three. Can you give them a hand right now for their tireless, wonderful, faithful service? I'm, yes, thank you so much. God knows all about it. You can be seated. But, so we were trying to figure out, okay, what are we going to do? And we're making plans and we're talking to people at the same time while we're grieving. And so I was sitting, it was kind of funny, I was in Rev's office and I was sitting behind his desk. And he was sitting on the couch. And so I was sitting at his desk, and I was looking at stuff on his desk, you know, while we were talking and trying to figure out what to do. My heart was kind of heavy. And I looked over, and I saw this book that was stuck in a whole bunch of other stuff. It was like crammed into this little divider thing. And I looked at it, I thought, that's a pretty book. 
because it's it's covered in leather. You know, I could just tell so that's a really nice book. As I was looking at it crammed in there, I thought, well, I want to look at that book. And so I started to like pull it out, but it wouldn't come. It was so crammed in there, I couldn't get it out. So I had to take both hands and get a hold of it and grab, pull it out like that. Something in me just really wanted to look at this book while I was sitting there talking to him. And it's called Sanctuary, Finding Moments of Refuge in the Presence of God. And so it's like the book y'all was calling me, like pick me up. Get me. Put me in your hand. I got something to say to you. Get me out of this thing I'm in right now. Because if I could have just reached over and pulled it out and it won't come, I could have said, well, you know, I'll look at that later someday, maybe. But I just was determined to get it and get it out of there. Why I was crammed in there, I don't know. So I opened it up. I said, oh, this is a devotion book. It's a beautiful book. Given to him by Sister Ruth Shuford, actually. And so I decided to turn to the devotion of the day yesterday. And when I did, I saw that the ribbon was in the book. And I said, well, Reb was reading this earlier then. Because the ribbon was on today. Y'all know what I'm talking about? He put the ribbon where he stopped. I said, wow, he had this earlier today. And he was the one that crammed it in the little divider there. But it was in his hands earlier. He was studying it. He was reading it. And so that blessed my heart. I like to know that my pastor studies and reads. You know, that he's got something that he goes to God with. And so I started to read the devotion for yesterday, and it jumped out at me. And I thought, no wonder this book wanted me to pick it up. And the title of the devotion yesterday was called Timeless Refuge. And y'all know that I really like science. I really like to study the creation. I think the creation confirms the existence of God. And it says here that we, as humans, are tied to time and space. They are all we know. We do not have a sense of the eternal. We're finite creatures, y'all, trying to understand the infinite. We don't have the, we try to understand the eternal, but we really don't have a sense of the eternal. And it says this earthly planet where we make our home is our point of reference in the universe. In other words, the only way we can understand the universe and the whole creation is that we're on the earth and we try to understand the earth and we try to understand the earth's place in the universe. But this is our point of reference. This is where we start. We start by trying to understand the earth and our home and then we go out from there. We have a spot in the universe that we call ours and we understand it. If it's stable, we feel secure. If it trembles and quakes, then we do as well. But God, our refuge, is not tied to this earth. In fact, He is not tied to anything. The entire earth could be removed and the waters could be carried into the midst of the sea and the waters could roar and be troubled and the mountains could swell and shake and God, our God, would still be a refuge. The comfort for us in this is that Nothing can happen to us in the time and space existence we live in that can impact God. Nothing can happen to us, this is what it's saying, that can impact God. It's not going to change God. No matter what happens to me, God is still the same. He is and will always be a refuge for us. When things change around us, God doesn't change. When things are in an uproar around us, He is not. When things of the earth are in a calamitous state, He is at peace. Therefore, He is always a timeless refuge where we can seek shelter and safety. Amen? This is a good word. This is a word that encourages my heart. This is a word that says God is what is is and will be always and forever outside of time, in time, God is. It's hard to understand it, but it tells me that no matter where we are, God is there. God is with Catherine right now in Nepal as she struggles to deal with what to do in the midst of an earthquake where people are dead all around, where there's no food, where there's no water, where there's no shelter. I know why Minister Mathis is so worried and upset about her daughter. I would be too. I would be. But God is with her. 
God is there in the midst of the earthquake just like he was before the earthquake. Amen. God is with Minister Michelle now just as he was when before the earthquake. When she was all, I'm sure she's always praying for her daughter halfway around the world in a place that really needs missionaries. But God was with her then. God is with her now. And God always will be with her. God was with us then even when we didn't know it. How many of us were suddenly had a spiritual awakening and realized God has always been with me. I just wasn't aware of it. I was asleep spiritually. Some of us were asleep for quite a while in our spirit. And then something woke us up. And when you wake up and you realize where you are, like, wow, you know when, uh, who was it, uh, the girl in Wizard of Oz, Dorothy, when she wakes up in Kansas after the tornado, and she goes, A.M., A.M., I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. She didn't know where she was. But God was with her there. In Oz, God was with her in Kansas before the tornado. God was with her in the tornado. And God was with her in Oz. Just as God has been with us when she woke up, and then later she wakes up, and she's back at home. After she leaves Oz, she wakes up and she sees all her people. And God was with her then too. And so we wake up to our situations. We wake up to what's going on in our lives. And we realize, you know, God, you've always been there. I just didn't recognize it. You're with me now. And I need to be more mindful of that. And you always will be with me. And so that is the message this morning. That God is a timeless refuge. That God is, there is nothing that we can do. There is nothing that can happen in the universe that can affect God. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is self-existent. If somebody says, well, my son used to always say, well, who made God? If God made everything, then who made God? That's not a good question. Nobody made God. God is self-existent. And I don't know how to understand that exactly, but I believe it. You know, I believe it that God is self-existent, that God, the existence of God needs no explanation. And if you need any confirmation, just look at the universe. Amen. Just look at what God made. Amen. Just look at nature. Just look at the cosmos. I, my mind gets blown when I look into space. And one of the things we know about the science has taught us is that information is never lost. Never. And that means that Brother Ricky's consciousness, now I'm getting deep here, his consciousness, his soul, his memories, his, his experiences, everything that made him to be a, a unique spiritual creature that he is, is having the material experience that he had, that is never lost. It has just transitioned and gone into another state where God is also. And yesterday I said, you know what? He just knows now what we all want to know. Amen? What happens next? Wouldn't you like to know? I'd love to know. When my first husband passed away, I said, wow, now he knows what I want to know. What happens next? Now what? What's it like? And I trust and believe that based on the experiences of people who've had near-death experiences and they've crossed over and come back, there's a lot of evidence for that, y'all. Look into it. They say that it is peace, that it is love, that it is wonder, that it is marvelous, that it is a thousand songs being sung all at the same time, every color you can imagine. You can see them all at once. I, I, if you can't, they like say we can't hardly even put it into words. So it's beautiful, it's marvelous, it's wonderful that God's plan for us is to, what he says, I have a, a good plan for you, a future not to harm you, but to prosper you. And so God, what his plan for us is, Reverend Hall says, bring us to yourself in peace. He brings us to himself in peace. And then we are with God in the spiritual realm. What that means, I don't know, but this word says that nothing can change God. That God is, God was, God is, God always will be, and He is a refuge. He's a place for us to rest. He's a place for us to run to, to feel protected. And right now, Brother Ricky is in the palm of His hand. I believe that with all my heart. I don't understand it exactly, but I believe it, that Ricky is in the palm of His hand. And so is my husband, Michael. And so is all, are all the other ones who have gone on before us. We don't have to worry about them. God, it said, the Word said, God is love. And the, the love is the ground of all being in the universe. That's a heavy thought, but it's the truth. Love is the ground.
ground of all being is what underlies everything in the universe. And what it's what caused the universe to come to be. The universes, in case y'all don't know, there's more than one. There are millions of universes. It's more than you can even fathom. But God is our refuge. God is there too. There's nowhere you can go. You can be on a comet in outer space and God is there. You can go to Mars on one of our explorers and God is there. You can be on the earth and God is there. Or you can be crossed over and God is there also. There's nowhere that God is not there. God is everywhere for all time. Amen? Amen. And so we don't worry today. We know that God is everywhere. So wherever you are this morning, let us stand. Wherever you are.